What up, everyone? Back for another video. Uh, it's been a little while because I had to wait for enough boxes to show up. We got the boxes of October and November because there was an off month in between where nothing really showed up. So I had to wait for enough time for enough boxes to show up to really do a decent video. And we still only have four. We only have four boxes here. So uh, going from late October all the way through November is what we have here. Hard to say exactly where some of these boxes land because they don't really have set dates anymore. And a lot of the description cards don't really say either, so just kind of that general area. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. First on the list, Geek Fuel. Nice and tiny. All right. First, our main item here was a Super 7 figure. This is Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins. It's got the Japanese cover on it. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I'm guessing that was the Japanese video game cover, but it's there. Uh, value on this is not great. It's only about twelve to fifteen dollars, which is pretty surprising. Usually, Super Seven figures go for at least seventeen or eighteen because that's what MSRP is. But for some reason, this one's going for significantly less, and I'm not really sure why. Maybe they just printed too many of them. But it was a good game, and Arthur's a popular character. He was in Marvel vs. Capcom, so he's well known. So I'm not really sure why it's going for that cheap, but it is. Next, we got pins. Pins from the Crypt. This is a nice little thing. It's kind of like a VHS, so you pull it out and then your pin's inside there. Uh, I got the Crypt Keeper. If I can pull it out without damaging it right now. There we go. Crypt Keeper. So yeah, that's what I got. Uh, these are going for like 10 to 12, which isn't too surprising. Uh, pins of that size and nature usually go for 10 to 12. Uh, I thought it would go for a little bit more because of the special boxing, but nope, just goes for 10 to 12. Then we got another pin, actually. This one's from Mondo. Looks like Pusheen, but it's not. Um, this one goes for about 10 bucks. And then last, we got some socks from The Shining. <laughs> and that's what those look like. And those go for like 10 to 12 bucks. So overall, our value on the low end is 42 and on the high end, 49 This ends up being about a $25 box. So decent value, almost double, pretty close to double. Um, we got a good mix of stuff. For a while, we were just getting like one item and they're finally, seems like they're picking up steam again, which is good. So I like that we have a nice variety of items. I thought they were all good, value was decent. Overall, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Obviously, they have so much room for improvement. They always have. But um, the Super 7 figures usually go for more. I just think that was just a randomly bad choice. So I think they deserve some credit on that. Overall, good stuff. Nice variety. So much better than they've been in a very long time. But still not super great, but worth it. 7 out of 10. Almost double your value. Next, the BAM box. So they just recently announced, they announced six months ago that they're closing their doors and they're not going to do any more boxes and they announced just the other day that they're going to continue but it's going to be much different so this is going to be the end of the subscription boxes that's still ending in December this is either the second to last or possibly the third to last one it's hard to keep track of those what they're going to continue doing is basically just the autograph no other items which you know I might be okay with depending on what their price point is because for the most part like the art print nobody cared about never had good value the pins were fine and then there was always one other random item so I'd be pretty okay with just keeping the autographs as long as the price point is reasonable if they keep it at the same $50 price point probably not going to be worth it and probably won't keep it around but just giving you all an update all right first off we got an autograph Chris Casamasa, Casamasa, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, this is going for a decent amount, like 40 bucks. And I'm kind of surprised because this is really the only significant role he's ever done is this. And then he played the Scorpion again in one of the other, the Mortal Kombat TV show they did. So that's really the only notable performances he's had. And this notably wasn't a very good movie. It was just cool because it was Mortal Kombat, but it's actually selling for like 40 bucks. Then we got an art print by Ken Hazer. And this, from what I can tell, is part of a series because I already saw next month's box and it seems like it's the next picture in a line and it seems like there's going to be one more. So I'm thinking that the last three months are a connecting picture, but that's purely speculation. Either way, this is being listed for like 10 bucks. It's not selling for that. 
No big surprise, they're almost always at best worth like 10 to $12, but most of the time nobody really wants them because it's not like horrible artwork, but it's not particularly great either. It's just kind of there. It looks like amateur artwork and it pretty much is. So not selling at $10. Then we got our pin, Wednesday Adams. That's going for 10 to 12, super standard. Then we got a little matchbook replica. But it is actually a matchbook. It's got matches in there. So that I couldn't really find any real value on, but I'm going to give it like a $3 to $5 value just to give it something and be fair. But yeah, that's not really saying much though. So value-wise on the low end, 63 On the high end, 67 This ends up being almost a $50 box after it's all said and done. So you're really only getting a little bit more than you paid for. And this is what I was saying at the beginning of the video. Like The autograph's great. Like that. Don't really care about the print. Never do. The replica, like, it's pretty hit or miss. Sometimes it's cool. Sometimes you get a fucking matchbook. Like, who gives a shit? And the pins are always nice, but everyone has a million pins these days, so they don't really hold any sort of value. Not many people collect them anymore, and it's hard to keep just, like, thousands and thousands of them. So not that they're not great. I still like them, but wouldn't be sad to see them go. Uh, that all being said, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Decent value, a little bit more than you paid for. Still good quality stuff but just a little bit better than okay. So as I was saying, it might be okay for them to just switch to that strictly autograph box. That might be okay because the rest of the items are pretty subpar. No big deal. So six out of 10 on that, bam, box. Next we got Loot Crate in an unmarked black box looking super sketchy. So this is where one of them where I don't really know what month it comes from because they always put their little description card in there. They do every time with a QR code and say, you want to know what's in the box, scan this code. And you scan it and it doesn't tell you what's in the box. It has all the previous boxes, but they stopped updating it over the summer. And they only update it like twice a year and then they'll add them all in there. So for the past like... I don't know, four or five boxes. We have no idea what month they're from, what's supposed to be in the box, no clue because they never update the site. But for some reason, they still put this in there. Why? I don't know. Not a good sign, but you know, whatever. So we got some pillowcase covers. I'll take them out and take a better picture of them. Uh, one's of Chucky and one's of Tiffany. They're actually pretty nice quality. I, I like that. I don't mind that. Pillowcases, it's something like everyone uses them. You can always use more of them. Uh, eventually, they get old and you have to rotate them out. So I don't mind that at all. It's pretty practical. And they go for a decent amount. They're going for like $15 to $20, which is a little bit more than the average pillowcase, which shows like that it's good. And the quality is good. Picture quality is nice. So all around, pretty good. Then we got a door hang. And this is from The Exorcist. Let me open it up. Sorry for the noise. So that's what that looks like. And I've actually never watched the original Exorcist, so I'm not super familiar with that character. And it's just one of those things, like I've always meant to watch it. I've, I'm, in, I'm into horror, I just never got around to it. But it's nice, it's actually metal, so it's not plastic or anything like that, so you can actually use this. So it is a good door hang, hanging over the top of the door for just like a jacket or coat or something like that. Very practical and it's nice quality. And that also goes for about $15 to $20. So good quality there as well. Uh, then we got a pin, and it's an Invader Zim pin, but it's a repeat item. How do I know? Because I have it. Where did I get it? From Loot Crate a very long time ago. So it, one of those things where it just seems like these companies are sort of falling apart because they're putting in repeat items from years ago that have just kind of been sitting around. So value on that, people are want, asking $10 for it, listing it for $10. It's not selling for that. These pins usually go for around six to eight, but giving it 10, because if you did want it, you would have to pay 10. So there you go. And the last item is where it gets really interesting. Here we got a Regan action figure from NECA uh, from their Toonie Terrors series. I actually always kind of like this series because I've always said it's kind of funny to see like really scary characters in a cartoony way. It's just kind of, fun i've always liked that and they do a good job on these and they really don't cost too much they're usually like 25 bucks roughly i see them in target all the time they don't really sell super well but they are from NECA. this is exclusive that's why it's special loot crate exclusive that's what loot crate used to be about that was kind of their thing they always got exclusive licenses 
two things and that was what made it really special that's how i got involved in this that's what started the channel literally that the sci-fi mystery minis from a decade ago loot crate got one exclusive figure and i wanted to complete the series that's how i found out about loot crate that was the first box i got that's what started the channel why they stopped doing that i don't know i'm guessing it became too difficult and it became cheaper to make their own products so they did that for a long time and they all sucked they were terrible then NECA bought the company and we thought well maybe the figures will get better and they didn't here we have something they should have been doing the entire time because value on this one hundred dollars hundred bucks and that's on the low end I saw listings sell for as much as hundred and sixty five dollars because this is the only place you can get this figure and nowadays not many people get this box it wasn't like it was 10 years ago where everyone was getting in there putting out thousands of boxes so these were very common not many people get it so it's very hard to come by and it's basically little to no effort from NECA all this is from what I can tell is just a palette swap it's just a slightly different color than the original figure why haven't they been doing this all along little to no effort costs basically no money and, and no work to just change a few colors change the paint job put it back in the packaging put a special sticker on there great perfect business sells for a hundred bucks worth so much money would bring so much business back to it this is what I figured NECA would do when they bought this company I figured they would put their NECA products which are great into the box and they just never did so why we're just getting this now I don't know it seems crazy to me this also seems like stuff that might have been in their horror box so maybe they already got this before and then they just had some left over, so they put it in the generic uh, nerd box for the Halloween. That could be the case. I'm not 100% sure. But this is just something they should have been doing. Put some of your cheaper figures in NECA that's, that you just have. Do a slightly different paint job. Make it exclusive. It would be a fantastic idea. You should just do that. This should be the shiny example of things you should do. It's easy for you. It's cheap for you. We like it. You like it. Win-win. Everyone's happy. Why is this such a crazy concept? Why do, why don't people just go to this? Why is this not just the go-to answer? I don't know. People are fucking crazy. I, I don't get it. Anyway, that brings our value on the low end of 140 on the high end of 150 which is crazy. That's way better than we've gotten from them for probably like five years. But... I also wanted to give the value based on if this wasn't so expensive, if they just put a generic one of these in there, the value of this box would still be like 65 on the low end and 80 on the high end. So even with a cheaper figure, it still would have been pretty great value. So all those things considered, I'm giving this box a 9 out of 10. Uh, I hope they do this again. There's still room for improvement. I, they, they're putting in four items, by the way, which I think is great. For a while, they were only putting in three. I think four should be the minimum. They could have put like a fifth item in a smaller one. They could have put a new pin in there. There's, there's a bunch of little things they could have done better. But value-wise, fantastic. This is a $40 box. Even on the low end, you're getting almost four times the value from one figure. So please, NECA, stop being stupid and do more of this thing that you did probably by accident. So simple, everyone would be happy. Nine out of 10, Loot Crate. And last. Pusheen box. And this is their fall kind of Halloween box. I had to take items out because you can see how much it's bulging. They stuffed this thing to the brim. Like there is so much stuff in there. It's kind of crazy. So there we go. So the first item's already out. It's this hoodie, a two-toned hoodie, which is really cool. Got Pusheen on the front. And Pusheen on the back. Very soft, but one of the problems I've always had with these boxes is when you sign up, they take your shirt size, but that's it. And if you're like me, many people wear different sizes for different products. I'm not just like a generic large or extra large. And shirts are usually wear large, sometimes even a medium, because I like shirts more fitted. But when it comes to jackets and sweaters, I like them to be big and I like a lot of room, so I don't wear them the same size. Honestly, for sweaters, I go like double XL and bigger because I like a little bit of space. I don't like it when they're tight. So that's going to be a large, so I'll have to end up selling it, but that's okay because value on that is $30 to $40. So as always, things in this box are just fantastic value. Next, we got a blanket. Mm -hmm. Pretty basic, not super big. 
That's the full size. So pretty small. It's what they call a throw. Uh, that's going for like 20 to 30, which again, very surprising considering it's such a small blanket. Then we got a beanie. Only 12 to 15 on this just because they've made so many of them. They may put one in another box that was identical to this. The only difference is one of the eyes was winking. That was it. And they've done similar hats to this, so they kind of all are around that same price. There's nothing really special about them, which is 12 to 15. If they made them a little more unique, they'd probably go for a decent amount because everything in this box does. But since they're overly generic, only like 12 to 15 bucks on that. Then we got a mug. I don't need to take it out, but you basically see the picture right there. Ta-da! But it is actually nice quality. It's actually ceramic. It looks like plastic in the picture. It's not. It's an actual ceramic mug. They do really nice quality stuff here. So it's really decent quality. Uh, this is going for actually $25 to $30, which is crazy. I've said before, mugs are one of the most common things we get in boxes, and they just never sell. I think part of it's so few people these days use mugs. So many people go to like Starbucks and things like that and get coffee drinks out there and not too many people just have them at home. They Some people do, but just not as common anymore. So they just rarely ever sell. And when they do, it's for a few dollars, like five or six bucks. So to see this going for 25 to 30 is crazy. Again, this fucking cat is just making things super expensive, but fine by me, ups the value. 25 to 30 bucks on that. Then we got a vinyl figure, as we almost always do. Very similar to one we've seen before, where it was pushing in a blanket, but this one just has a little ghost. So it kind of seems like they're recycling ideas and figures a little bit and then making them a little more generic, but it doesn't matter because they're still going for crazy amounts. This is selling for 20 to $25. So it seems like they don't have to put in the effort for these things to still be really expensive. It would just be nice if they did. Then we got a little nightlight. This is pretty cool. It's a clear thing, but it just kind of lights up everywhere. And it actually changes colors. It doesn't say that on here, which is weird, but I took it out and tried it, and it actually just changes colors like goes through the rainbow. So it's it's really cool, actually. It's very nice. And I'm surprised they don't mention that it's color changing. That's very odd to me. That's going for about 18 to 20 bucks. Then, last item, just some decals. There's two of them in there. They're pretty decent size. Pushing and some ghosts. Even those are going for 10 to 12 bucks and selling. Everything I've list, uh, talked about here is actually selling for those prices. So significant value. On the low end, 135. On the high end, 172, which is very common for this box. This ends up being about a $60 box. So even on the low end, easily double your value. On the high end, pretty close to triple your value. That's so fantastic. So for that reason, it's getting a 10 out of 10 because this is about as good as you can possibly get. It's very specific, so you know what you're going to get. It's all very practical items. Some are collectible, but the others are just things you can genuinely use, even if you don't like pushing. Like, you could use these things just any given day. And they're all 100% exclusive. The quality on them is really fantastic. There's just not much more they really could do. I'm surprised they can put this much value into it. Like obviously there's always the option to do more, but it just doesn't seem like it's possible. I wouldn't even think this would have been possible for the price. And it still boggles my mind that this box does so well. And I've tried out just about every other box Culturefly has to offer. Friends, The Office, Dragon Ball, DC, Nicktoons, you name it, I've tried it at some point and they are nowhere near that. The scores were like fives and sixes and sometimes lower. But this one almost always is a 9 or a 10. So it's just so crazy. And I know Pushin has a lot to do with it. He's a very popular cat. He ups the value. But as far as quality and items and things like that, that's all the same across the board. I just am surprised to this day Pushin's still that popular and still that value, valuable. It's like Hello Kitty. Like it just never goes away and never goes out of style. So a very impressive thing. And that's it. The very short video. Only four boxes. And the month uh, boxes for December are right here. So they've come in. Got three of them already. So it should be a decent month. But as always, these boxes are going away. So they'll get smaller and smaller. I've been trying to be good about updating uh, the Instagram with different collectible things. But not super great because, as you see, here's my mail. Things I haven't even opened. Here's the mail of things I have opened on the table and just all through here. So I'm just terrible about remembering things. I just I need to find a better way to share 
my collecting journey because there's so much of it. So much happens every day. I just haven't found a proper outlet. So if anyone ever has any ideas, please let me know. I'm always happy to figure things out. It's just hard to do videos because they're so time consuming because I do all the editing and everything myself. Other than that, if you have any questions, um, I'm going to try and talk more about investing. Lately, I've been, uh, obviously, I invest, invest in all these things, but I've always talk about value. But I should be talking about investment quality more often. I'm going to try to do so on that. So as always, if anyone has any questions on things, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. Other than that, I'll see you on the next video. Uh, so thank you for watching and supporting. Love you all. Peace.